Hi there. Welcome back to another demonstration video for the eDoom cartridge for the Commodore 128. Um, this is going to be a three-part video and it's going to be devoted to programming on the eDoom cartridge. Uh, so a little bit different than other videos I've done recently. And the three parts are going to each have a different programming language and targeting a different processor. Well, wait, three? Yes, three languages, three processors. Uh, so part one, this part, is going to be a tutorial of using the C programming language to target the Z80 processor in the C128. And then part two, we'll recreate the same simple program using 6502 assembly language and targeting the main CPU of the C128. And then for the third part, we'll use the Lua programming language and create the program to target the to run on the ARM processor that's uh, inside of this eDoom cartridge. So with that, let's get started. Um, we're sitting here at the boot screen of eDoom, and we're just going to go ahead and press F7 to launch into the eDoom shell. And before we can do any C programming, uh, we first need to have an editor for editing our source code, and we need to have a compiler that can turn our source code into Z80 binaries. Um, so we're going to have to do a couple things first. Uh, one is figure out what to use for an editor. So there is an editor that comes with the eDoom shell. It's this edit command. And I'll show you real quick what that looks like. We'll edit our autoexec.bat file. And so inside the editor, um, you can see, you know, it's a pretty serviceable little Commodore editor. Um, but it's got a couple drawbacks that are going to make it not very good for this programming use case. Uh, one of them is this the Petsky editor. And we don't actually want to create our source code in Petsky. We want to use nice interchangeable ASCII character set instead. And the other issue is that the memory is kind of limited. You can see at the top of the status bar it tells you there's about 62,400 bytes free, uh, which might sound like a lot, but you can use that up pretty pretty easily with a you know, large source code file. Um, so we won't use this editor for creating our source code, but we will use it as long as we're here to create some useful aliases. Um, so you see I already have one alias for launching a different editor called Joe. And so the, the alias Joe is just going to launch the Joe command under Linux. And that will be the editor that we use. Uh, we also have an alias for make, make directory, make dir. Uh, this because the eDoom shell doesn't actually have a make directory command. So we use the Linux make dir to create directories and subdirectories. And we're going to add one. So we'll do another DOS key command for CC. So C stands for C compiler. And we'll alias that to run the ZCC compiler under Linux. And we'll pass it the argument of plus C128 to tell it to build a binary for the Commodore 128. So we'll go ahead and save this in our little editor and exit out of it. And just so I don't forget later, we'll go ahead and exec the auto exec so that we pick up that new um, alias. So we rerun that. And now we want to set up our ZCC compiler. So the way you do that is just press F7 to enter into the Linux prompt. And we're going to clone the repository for the eDoom cartridge. So we'll do a git clone command and type in the URL. And we need to spell it correctly. Eum cartridge. And press return. So now we have an Eum cartridge directory. And within it, we actually have all the source code, also headers, also documentation files, things we're going to need for programming and assembly language later. All the assembly code that the Eum cartridge um, uses is in this repository. And there's also the setup.shell script, which you'll want to run before you do any programming. And if we provide the sudo password, then we'll see what this script does is it installs uh, several additional packages. So it installs Acme, which is our cross assembler that we'll use in part two. It install, installs this eDoom ZCC package, which has our Z80 compiler, 
installed some fonts and some other basic tools. Um, so I've already installed these things previously. That's why it says it's warning us that it'll be reinstalling. So we can just press no to skip reinstalling them. But the first time you do this, you'll get all these packages installed. Um, once that's done, you're done with the Linux prompt and you can exit out of it. And so we're back back into our um, Edun shell. And let's go ahead and create a subdirectory to use for our development files. So we'll do a make dir command, which you saw before we defined as an, as an alias. And we'll create this uh, dev subdirectory. So that runs under Linux. And now if we type dir again, you'll see we have this dev directory. And we can cd into that. And now we're ready to create our source code file. So like I said, we're going to use an editor called Joe. So we just type Joe and the name of our file, which is going to be hello.c. And press return. That launches us into our editor. So we're inside the editor here with this blank file. And a couple things you want to know about Joe first is Control-K is the hot key. And if you want to see a help screen, you can just press Control-K and then H. And it will show you all the basic keyboard commands, again, most of them beginning with Control-K, um, for doing things like cutting and pasting, um, search search and replace, uh, loading files, saving your files, exiting the editor, all that kind of stuff. And so you want to become familiar with these um, keyboard commands if you're going to use Joe. Um, but we can dismiss the help just by pressing Control-K and H again. And there's also Control-T, which allows you to set up, um, you know, various options like uh, auto indenting, word wrap, whether or not syntax highlighting is on. And yes, we do have syntax highlighting in this editor. Um, and, you know, size of your indent, whether you use tabs or spaces, all this type of stuff. And so if you don't, if you want, don't want to change any of that, just press Control T again to exit out of it. And you can start typing your program. So C program, we're going to need a, a main function. So we'll type int main. And right here, you might be stopped in your tracks by wondering where on my Commodore 128 are the curly brace keys that I need for typing in C code. Um, well, they don't exist. Uh, you have square braces, but no curly braces on the keyboard. However, with the Edom cartridge, the curly braces are there. Um, it is mapped to the keyboard and it is in the character set. And the keys you want to use, you actually have two options. You can use shift with minus and plus to give you open curly brace and close curly brace. Or you can use control with the square braces to also give you curly brace. So type of curly brace. And now we have a workable main function. And then we're just going to create a, a for loop. And within this for loop, we're going to draw some random text on the VTC display. Uh, so let's go ahead and have it loop for 200 times. So we'll have a counter that goes from 0 to 200. Uh, we're obviously in, not in insert mode. So we need to switch that back to insert mode. So then within our for loop, um, let's go ahead and define a random number. So we'll have uh, r equal our random number. And we just use the crand function. And that's going to give us a big number. Uh, but we don't want a big number. We want a small number we can use to specify a random row on the VGC display. And we also want to specify a random color. So a, a color value from um, just 1 to 15. So for the, for the row, we'll set that as y equal r and we'll mod 25. So that will give us a row value of 0 to 24. And then for the color, we can call that col. Uh, we want it to be from 1 to 15. So we'll do r mod 15. 
So that gives us a value of 0 to 14, and then you just plus 1. So now it's 1 to 15. And so now once we have these random values, then we can use the print string VDC API to write some text on the VDC display. So print string VDC. And we need to specify the X and Y location, the color, and the string. So for the X, we'll just take the random Y value and multiply that by 2. And we'll do that by shifting it left by one bit position. So that's our X value, then our random Y value, our random color, and then our message. So that's basically the gist of the program. So loop through 200 times, pick a random number, use that to draw our message on a random row in a random color. And since we used um, X as two times the Y value, it's going to actually draw on, like on a diagonal um, down the screen. Uh, so to complete the program, we need a few more things. We need to define our variables. So let's define those variables as unsigned short. We have a R, a Y, and COL for color. And then we need to define our character string. So I'll do a character pointer message, and we'll set that equal to hello world, exclamation. So you'll see I did that in all caps, and that's because it's ASCII text within our source code, but it's going to be translated and drawn as Petsky text on the VGC display. So our all caps hello world will actually show up in Petsky as all lowercase hello world. Um, that's the conversion. The uppercase characters in ASCII become lowercase characters in Petsky. However, it would be nicer if we, if we displayed it as like capital H hello capital W world. So to do that, we can just switch those two characters um, into capital letters in Petsky. And we do that by, first we'll modify character zero, which is the H. And we just have to or it with a hex 80. So basically set the uppermost bit. And we do the same thing for the seventh character, which is the W. And also or that with a hex 80. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to enable the VDC and clear its display. So we do that by calling map VDC, which basically sets up the memory map for the VDC's memory. And then we can use a clear screen VDC. And you give this a character code, clear screen VDC. And the character code we'll use 32 for space characters. And then we want it to be all black, our background color. So we do also clear attribute VDC. And we set all the attributes to this uh, constant VDC black that's going to be defined in our header file. So now we'll have a, a uh, text screen with all the characters are black and they're all spaces. So you just have a blank screen. So that it's just about everything except at the at the bottom here after our for loop rather than just automatically jumping back exiting the program and jumping back to the Eden shell we're gonna wait for the user to press a key so we'll put a while loop and we'll while on not keyboard hit and we'll just do nothing so while no no key is hit we'll just sit there in that while loop um, until the user presses the key and then the only thing still missing is some include files. So we're going to need to include the conio file, because that's where the KB hit function is defined. And we're going to include c128 slash VDC, because that's where these other VDC um, functions are defined. And that should be our complete, simple C Hello World program. So we just press uh, Control K X to save our file. And now we're back in the Edun shell. And if you type directory, you'll see that we have a new 373 byte hello.c file. And so to compile, we'll use our CC alias and just specify the name of the file. 
And we can also specify a minus O to give the name of the output that we want. So we'll just create an output file called hello. And you'll see that runs in Linux and it's done in half a second. And now we have an additional hello binary file. And if we want to run that, we use the zload command because we're running a Z80 binary. So we just type zload and the name of our binary. And there you go. Colored random text drawn at colored rows. And then it sits there and waits for you to hit a key. So that concludes part one, uh, C language targeting the Z80. Um, I'll see you back here hopefully for part two and we'll recreate this program in assembly language on the Edwin cartridge. And then for part three, we'll recreate this program using Lua, Lua script and targeting the ARM CPU. So thanks for watching. Tune in again next time.